Hi, this is Norman Fox, and this is the interview for the VCB Group. And the first question is, how do you, how did you start singing with your group? Well, I've been asked this countless times, and um, it's like many of the old groups in that era started. We were in high school. Uh, Alan Freed was on the radio, and I was an avid listener to Alan Freed, and so were members of my, my, my friends. Um, I went to Dewitt Clinton High School in the Bronx, and um, we were so infatuated with the music that we tried to emulate the sounds of the groups that were on Alan Freed's show, show on Alan Freed's show that he played. Um, vocal groups, group harmony, things like that. And so eventually what we did was we formed a group, or we tried to form a group, we had auditions, and we form, formed a group at school. Uh, we brought in members, we rejected members, we, until we got the harmony sounds that we wanted, and we used to sing in the bathroom because there was an echo there and it made our voices sound better and the harmonies sound better and um, we finally got together and, and got a group. The original name of the group was called the Velvetones and um, we started singing at school. We started singing at other places too. We started singing at the Y. We started singing at uh, uh, different venues where people asked us to sing. We never made any money uh, but we got popular and it was a great way to communicate uh, and uh, it, it was fabulous. Uh, then eventually, uh, one of the guys in the group had a connection uh, with a record store on 3rd Avenue and 145th Street and that was also in the Bronx. And we went down there and uh, we met him and the owner of the record store and he liked our sound and he brought up a um, uh, a record company individual or a group of people. They heard us, they liked us, and um, they signed us. And that's basically how the group got started. I mean, I could ramble on about this for a long time, but uh, those are the basics of how the group got started. The second question is, what are your favorite Rob Roy songs and why? That's an interesting question. Our first real hit was Tell Me Why, and um, I did like it very much. And um, it was a great song. It got a lot of airplay. It's, it, people like it. I still get tremendous commentary about it today and all kinds of fan mail of people all over the world who really loved the song. Um, we made that Tell Me Why song for Backbeat Records, which was our first um, record company that we worked for. And um, then we went on, it, with that session we did four songs. And uh, it was Tell Me Why, it was Dance Girl Dance was the second side. Um, and then there was Audrey, and then there was one more that I, I'm not sure, I don't remember which one it was, but there were four songs. Uh, Tell Me Why is certainly a terrific song, but then I went on to write other songs, and my favorite of all the songs that I wrote was a song called Dream Girl. Um, it was, I recorded it for Capitol Records, and, um, it was just a beautiful song. It came together so easily. It was probably the easiest song that I ever wrote. I may have wrote it in a half hour. I may have written it, I'm sure I wrote it on the subway where I wrote a lot of my songs between the, the clacking of the tracks and the, um, and, and the the swaying of the car gave me the rhythm and gave me the mood that, I, that, that put me in 
so that I was able to write. And that's where I wrote a lot of my songs. And certainly Dream Girl was um, a romantic, wonderful song. And, um, and to this day, um, I get fan mail about this song and, um, and people tell me that they walk down the aisle to, the, to it on their weddings or their second weddings and um, uh, I was just so happy to write it. it. It was just a wonderful song and I real that's my favorite. The next question, the third question, is um, who are some of my favorite performers of the 1950s and early 60s, and uh, have I stayed in touch with them? Um, one of my very favorite performers was Chuck Berry. Unfortunately, we, we lost Chuck uh, recently. Um, I thought he was absolutely fantastic, and I remember him at the early rock and roll shows that I used to go to uh, at a Alan Freed's, at the Brooklyn Paramount Theater, Alan Freed's rock and roll shows. And uh, he just blew me away. He was off the charts. Uh, some of the other groups that I liked very much and used to emulate were the Cleftones and the Cadillacs and the El Dorados, um, the Flamingos, and uh, Kenny Vance and the Planetones, Dion and the Belmonts, and the Heartbeats, which I thought was the real root. These groups were the real root of rock and roll history. Now, I do shows with all of these guys over the years and have remained uh, relatively friendly with them, but basically only at the shows. Um, I moved out to California about nine years ago and um, became very friendly with Wally Roker, who was the bass for the Heartbeats. And we started a doo-wop society out here, and Wally was very instrumental in it. And unfortunately, Wally passed away about a year and a half ago, but I miss him terribly. He was a wonderful guy. Um, I like Terry Johnson of the Flamingos very much, and it's always a pleasure to see him when I do. It's always wonderful to watch Kenny Vance perform uh, when I do the shows with him, and even as an audience participant when I go and see him, and uh, he, he's a terrific guy and, and a true gentleman. Um, I've also done uh, done a lot of work with the uh, with the dubs. I think they have a terrific sound and their bass sometimes bases with me um, and he also went to uh, uh, D. Wood Clinton. Um, yeah, I, I, I see these guys. I don't see them socially uh, but it's fun when I see them at the shows. Um, it's also very interesting for me to note to you that Alan Freed uh, was a neighbor of mine in the Bronx. Uh, I wasn't aware of it until uh, I saw him one day and he was coming out of my building and then I became friendly with his daughter and we spent a lot of time in his apartment. I mean, I was a kid and uh, I really worshiped the guy um, he was really a pioneer, and I always say it at my shows, uh, that uh, if it wasn't for Alan Freed, uh, I really don't know whether the music as we know it and has how it has evolved today would have been the same. I'm sure that there would have been music. I'm sure that things would have evolved. But Alan Freed was a real pioneer. Um, he uh, died broke. He didn't have a great story. Uh, he was uh, investigated by the federal government because he was too powerful and they were afraid of rock and roll in those years. But he was a true pioneer and, uh, and he was just terrific, terrific guy. The 
The fourth question is, am I still performing? And is there anything interesting that I would like to say? Uh, yeah, any, or any projects that I am, uh, that I'm working on that I think are interesting that the audience might be uh, interested in hearing about. Well, yes, the answer is I am still performing, and I really do love it. Um, I, ha I have, over the last few years, done many shows, and I've done them in different parts of the world. Uh, and it is uh, the music, this music has given me an opportunity to uh, do shows in, in places that I never thought that I would perform, like we did some shows in Europe, and I did some shows in Spain, and um, I really enjoyed it very much where the audiences are not of the age of the audiences here in the States. These are much younger people. I, I did a show in Spain where I don't think that there was anybody in the theater that was over 40 years old. And they love the music in Europe. They love doo-wop rock and roll music. And uh, it was just a thrill working for them. Um, I have a project that's coming up that I'm doing in Las Vegas next year. I did it about a year and a half, two years ago. It's called Viva Las Vegas. And um, it is, it's, it's doo-wop, which is a part of rockabilly music. And it's a, it's a monstrous uh, uh, event uh, that comprises maybe five or six of the big hotels there. Uh, many, many thousands of people, a large car show that's part of it, many different bands of, a, of, of uh, different uh, origins and types of music, and then there's a doo-wop night that they have, and it's, it's just, they're a wonderful audience, and they really love doo-wop, and I love working for them, so I'm doing that in Vegas next year. Um, we're heading... Uh, uh, my wife and I are heading to uh, Asia, where we're planning to do some shows in Hong Kong and um, in other cities that we're planning to visit there. It's not, hasn't come to fruition yet, but we're working on the, uh, we're working on the projects. So those are the things that I'm doing. Um, they're excited. I don't work constantly. I don't want to. Um, I'm enjoying my retirement, I'm enjoying my grandchildren, I'm enjoying just kicking back, but I do love to still sing and, uh, and do and produce these shows, it, it, it's great.